Welcome back class. Uh, with this particular video we will be focusing on the flying roller coaster. Now with this particular flying roller coaster, um, I didn't go, uh, there's not a lot to say about it. There is only one, maybe two or three, uh, particular, I say particular a lot, don't I? Um, but, uh, there's only like a few differences with a flying roller coaster compared to other coasters. Um, like I said, there are just like maybe three different inversions or elements that are found on, <coughs> on flying coasters than anything else. Uh, so I kind of made this a little bit different. Um, I decided to go ahead and really, really theme this. That's why this one take a bit longer than the other coasters. Um, let's see here. Uh, it is based off, not really based off, but it's inspired by, um, of course, if you already noticed, if you've already been there before, but uh, it is inspired by Manta at Universal, no Universal, what am I saying Universal, uh, SeaWorld, <laughs> SeaWorld Orlando, oof, um, but yeah, it is um, based off of that particular ride, there you, say, there you go, I said particular, uh, if you are old enough to drink, possibly have a shot, or yeah, a drinking game, every time I say particular, have a drink. You can use it with Monster or whatever too. Whatever your drinking preference is. But um, anytime I say particular. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, with this particular, you know, take another drink. Um, ride, we went ahead, or I went ahead, and went did some extensive uh, theming. Um, with this ride, it is based off of the Native American belief of Orcas and their spirituality or something. I um, I did do some research about it. Uh, uh, again, woo, we're going to go ahead and butcher some new names. Oh, boy. No name is safe for me. Um, the Tlingit, Tlingit um, tribe up in the northern part of America and the Chinook. That one I know I said right. So the Tlingit tribe... Sorry if you are one. I'm sorry. I don't. I can't say words, or I can't say names. But yeah, the Tlingit tribe and the Chinook tribe are, I guess, one of the more popular, um, or at least the ones that do worship or have the uh, animal totem of the orca within their religion. So that one, what it's based off of, and that's why it has like this sort of northern american kind of theme going with it uh, of course guests go ahead and go through here kind of meander around through the wonders of nature through the trees and the caverns and of course goes through here right back the other way of course this is where you have the extensive zigzagging uh <laughs> zigzagging queue here to add more lines to it um, of course, and then you go through a little more rather interesting break run area here. This is like the last section before actually going into the station. This is the the storage area and the break run, so it's like a nice while you're waiting. There it goes, like while you're waiting in line. Oh, hey, there's the ride. <laughs> so really nice. Uh, I really kind of try to make this a really good theme here because, you know, there's not a lot to do with the flying coaster, and it is one of my favorite rides to go on. But there really isn't a lot to go with here, but, uh, you know, I'm just trying to give you guys something good to look at. Oh, but there, ooh, I uh, missed a spot there. Oh, whatever. It's, it's we'll, we'll fill that in later. But there's something really interesting about um, sta flying roller coaster stations. Uh, I think only flying roller coasters have done this so far. Uh, at least to my knowledge. I, I haven't seen any other stations that do this, but like, as far as I know, I know Manta has it. Tatsu here at Six Flags does it, or has it. But um, it's called a dual station. Now you're all wondering, how did you do that? Well, you know, I know most it's roller coaster tycoon three has been out way too long, and of course, our people have already known how to do this. Uh, yeah, that, that switch back kind of thing going, and then once that one's done, this will go through here. But yeah, it, you know, it's people have already know about RCT three. But if you haven't, you know, I'll probably go ahead and make a tutorial on how to make this possible. Um, but yeah, if you if you guys are really interested, of course, RCT3 is a pretty old game, so <laughs> there are already a lot of tutorials about this. So um, uh, if you want to go ahead and look it up, or if you want me to do a, a tutorial on it, um, I think it's called Interconnecting Coaster Tracks. Um, also with this one too, you'll be able to, uh, I think, like go through the go through tunnels a lot easier. But yeah. 
<laughs> I'm gonna have myself again, but yeah, this is technically a glitch that you have to do. It has to deal with your uh, pro, not programming, but yeah, you really have to go through your codes in order to um, order to do this. You need like particular codes, but whatever. I'm getting ahead of myself. But um, let's see here. Uh, nothing much else to talk about this besides that dueling station. Okay, so first of all, the riders go ahead and, of course, particularly go up a chain lift. Parti uh, particularly, oh, there you go. <laughs> Another shot for you guys. Um, this one's a little interesting, of course. I really don't like it when I when I build angled uh, uh, chain lifts. You know, like the grid and it goes at an angle. I really don't like that because you know the odd shape of the top that you have to make it go back into the back on the grid but you know for this ride I just went ahead and just you know bit the bullet I'm just like whatever it's just one small portion of the ride so yeah I just went ahead and just did that um of course when you go down the first first dive here finally after uh Doing all the drops with a weird angle here, weird angle here. We finally got to a more proper BNM drop here, which is a nice swooping drop down all the way down to our first element. Now, this element is rather unique, not rather, but really unique to the flying coaster. Um, particularly BNM. Uh, this one is called a pretzel loop, named after its shape. Yeah. <laughs> So, of course, riders go ahead and go through a half loop, go down. Unfortunately, um, RCT3 doesn't have, like, you know, uh, an actual pretzel loop kind of element to make, so you have to kind of fiddle around with a, a bunch of stuff in order to get this pretzel loop. Uh, some people put the S bend on top here and the S bend here, but it kind of looks too, how do you say, um, too crooked when you have two S bends. So that's why I just put, let's see, a half loop here, and then I put only one S bend at the bottom, goes back up with another half loop, and then goes on to continue its flight. Okay, so then we go ahead and go to this one, this particular one. It's not really known for the B&M flyers. Um, I think the only roller coaster that does this is on air, over in Alton Towers again, you know, they always have such awesome coasters, first Nemesis, now air. But, um... Yeah, in my opinion, with um, flying coasters, uh, unlike inverted, I prefer them being really high up. I mean, come on, this is a flying roller coaster. You're supposed to fly, and, like, the only one that really does that is Tatsu. You're, like, what, 200, 300 feet in the air because of the you're on top of a mountain? I mean, going up that lift hill, looking down, all the way down from that top of the mountain, that is freaking scary. <laughs> You do not have any, um, unlike in a Manta, I believe, there's like a, a grid or a staircase under you, under you. No, there is nothing under you while climbing that lift hill. Ooh, it's, you know, I feel like it's just going to like the lap bar or the restraints are just going to, you know, all your doom. Ah, yeah, whatever. But uh, yeah, I do particularly like it when it's um, high up in the air rather than close to the ground, you know, trying to hug the ground or whatnot but you know I digress um, with air of course they have their uh, limits good for nemesis and vertical coaster in particular not me for uh, flying coasters but yeah anyway whoo off topic again uh, this particular um, element is known as a fly and lie uh, first of course, of course it's called the flying lie because you go from a flying position to a lay down position now again this is not really um, common in most B&M coasters you're mostly just on your belly flying around uh, the only one that does this and it's only like really short amount of time is on air at Elton Towers um, Vacoma does makes their own uh, versions of flying coasters uh, called a lie, lay down coaster. Uh, it's in alphabetical order. Here it is, lay down coaster. Uh, with these ones, these do have more elements where you do lie down. Um, the only one particular uh, um, one particular roller coaster that I can think of that uses this kind of track or Vacoma that Vacoma made with these is Batwing. 
Um, I think it used to be a, another Batman the Ride, but it was a laydown coaster, but they just renamed it Batwing. Um, I think there's also another one. It's either Stealth at Paramount. Um, um, you know, I got to look this up now. I don't want to give you guys any false misinformation. So, I think Stealth is one of those. And unfortunately, I think it's no longer with us. Yes, they had to go ahead and take all that out. Such a shame. But, uh... You know, for some reason, my internet is going super slow. We'll get back to that for a minute. Maybe we'll go ahead and catch up on that at the end of this video. So we're going to go ahead and a continue on here. Now, of course, this is like one of the most common elements ever, which I, have, I haven't even done yet. Wait, have I? Have I done one of these things? No. Well, maybe there is one. However... Not one quite as this. Um, with this one, this particular element is known as a helix. Now, with some beginner um, RCT3 people or the ones that don't, you know, really aren't into coasters, they do a lot of these. Particularly, you know, they do this spiral thing where, the, you know, the. Um, let me see. <laughs> Example time. Oh, yeah, let it go through. Um, but, uh. Hold on, okay? Okay, so let's say, you know, like with everybody else, they like to make this kind of drop. Yeah, that, that, that's overkill. Don't, don't do this. Um, particularly, helixes only come in twos. That's as much, like, at least, uh, that's, even that's a little too much. But, like, only, I think, the only ones that do do that, like, at least two to three are, like, the ones in Japan. And they're, like, really high up, and there's, like, water below them. Um, but yeah, commonly, or particularly, mm -hmm. um, they only come with at least, at least one, like that, at most, two helixes. So far in my lifetime, I have not seen roller coasters that do have a bajillion helixes, but, um, I know in partic particular, in Japan, I'm just saying particular now, so you guys, if you guys are make, playing this drinking game. Yeah, whatever yeah yeah I'm doing it on purpose but uh yeah um they're just gonna have just two helixes that's about it you know try not to overkill at all and then we go of course go ahead and go into another element um I know this is called a half turn however unfortunately again um RCT3 uh, we can't really have that many elements unfortunately but um this is the closest thing to an egg turn. Now, if you have seen uh, real egg turns, particularly the one on Tatsu, um, it is shaped like an egg at a specific angle, so that's why it is called an egg turn. Um, but with this one, it's an overbank turn. Yeah, RCT3 with their limited elements. Um, we'll just have to go and stick with that and use our imaginations and believe it's an egg. It's just a really gigantic egg. So, um, we're going to go ahead and go back to another one. Instead of a fly to lie, it is now a lie to fly. Get it? Yes? Mm -hmm. um, of course. Yes. I'm kind of killing the joke here. But anyway, there we go. Lie to fly and finally onto another break run. Of course, I did pre built this other than the last one. Um, goes ahead and goes to two more inversions, goes into a couple zero G rolls. Well, yes, thank you. My park is really beautiful. Um, uh, one word of advice, it does go a little bit slow here. Um, just letting you know, I did make one version of this one, of this, per of this flying coaster. Particular. I was going to say particular. Flying roller coaster ride. However, I didn't like the way it looked, so... I made a second one, I kind of delved more into the theming and the way it looks, so I didn't even build the ride first. What I did was I made the entrance here, tried to make it look like it's meandering through, you know, caverns and walls and whatnot. Um, but then I looked here, I'm like, wait, Manta has like this portion where you go on the water and it sprays water out. Of course, I can't do that here, I mean, unless I use the uh, custom, not cu well, yeah, the custom water jet thing. So I built this first, before even building the station, I just built this first, this whole helix, 
and then up to here so that's why I guess I tried to it's I guess it's okay yeah I guess this is like a, tr a, a tip whoa that is really dangerous the, they are not supposed to do that if you are a roller coaster <laughs> manufacturer that is the most dangerous thing to do but um I think it's probably because of the way that I built this thing um I will go ahead and show you how I was able to whoa near crash right there but uh, how I was able to make that dual station and that's why there's two at a time is that why that it's possible that it's doing that but whatever most dangerous thing that you could do on this kind of ride don't do it um but where was I oh my god I lost my spot oh well, yeah but um I found it uh if you guys like you know I don't know if people have been doing have done this however the way I built this particular ride usually some people build the coaster first before um, doing the landscaping however with this one I only built one portion of the track like there was just this like not even this twist was here it was just this uh, swoop right here and I knew that there was gonna be like some kind of cavern here and then I'd finish it off once I built the station but uh, yeah, all that was here was just this swoop here in the helix and then back into the cave. And then I went ahead and modeled this area and then made the station. And the only thing that I built that was just, you know, all nothing but coaster and then terrain was all the way here until the break run. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's just my preference on how I built this one. Um, whatever makes it worth your while, you know. Uh... But, uh, yeah, I do believe that's up for the coaster. Just a couple zero G rolls here and there. A nice final helix before it goes inside. Uh, not a lot in the inside. It just goes ahead and twists and turns. And then it goes into the station run. Or the block run for the station. And then that is it. The e goes ahead and departs. Ah! It departs in any one of these dual stations. And then all the guests are on their way. Uh, elsewhere to go and ride more rides but uh yeah that's about it for this coaster um, we're gonna go ahead and delve a little bit more into the uh, the scenery of this place you know just so I have more time with you guys um, the way I made this exit was a, a little weird because of the dual coasters I had to make two stations so of course there had to be two entrances and two exits so this one is the main one or people have to see and this one is just a hidden one you know it's just there for um how do you say it's not an aesthetic it's a functionality there you go so that um this this part of the station doesn't go in empty without any peeps whatsoever so that's why there's a second station there or second entrance there not viewable of course without this so you know this one is just made as the regular exit Okay, on with the exit. Something a little bit different. So now it's long and meandering. However, just like in Manta, where you go ahead and go through an aquarium of mantas after you ride Manta. With my orca ride, after riding all around as an orca, you actually go ahead and go underground and then underwater to see a live orca. Right there, see the little peeps, so you see how they're odd? This guy, he's really excited here, yes. Underwater seeing orcas. I'm so excited that I'm hunched over and depressed looking, but in the inside, I'm really excited. Oh, see? He, he changed his mind. Anyway, that was me. I made him change his mind. Because he was on camera. That's how, that's how he knew. But yeah, um, enough of my corny jokes. Or failed attempts at making you guys laugh and entertain you. Um... Something a little extra, I went ahead and did a little more, you know, try to go above and beyond here. Um, with the particular Killer Whale show, um, of course, with like at SeaWorld, you have the stage area. And of course, you have the, uh, the actual tank where they can go ahead and swim around and chill. Um, backstage here, the training area, like either that or that medical area where they check up on the orcas just to be sure they're okay you know or you know again it's the training area where they can do their stuff before they actually do it on stage but uh yeah it is themed again i have you've been to sea world back in like the early 90s it looks like this now 
before its whole believe thing and whole, you know, trying to be like Disneyland thing. I like this particular one where it, um, it kind of harkens back to the spirituality where the native, where Native Americans, the Chinook or the Tlingit would, uh, you know, it's themed after the native, the Native American, uh, ideals and whatnot until they change it to the whole oh we want to be like disneyland believe Ooh. no no you had a thing going that was awesome and unique and then you just wanted to be like disneyland and just added fireworks to your show i don't like it go back to your native american theme it looked awesome but anyway yeah i digress yet again um but I guess that's it for this particular roller coaster. Um, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to go ahead and ask in the comment section below. Um, next up will be our last one, unfortunately. Um, I am missing one. I did miss one. Uh, seeing as though the uh, winged coaster, we don't really have a winged coaster. Um, we're going to go ahead and just make two coasters instead of one. Uh, because I did forget the hyper coaster, you know, Nitro, Titan, all that. Well, not Titan, but there's another particular Goliath that uses the four, uh, four abreast seating rather than Nitro or Apollo's Chariot. Um, but, you know, there's nothing really much to do there because, you know, it's just up and down, up and down. But, you know, still, I'm going to go ahead and cover it for you guys. And, of course, we're just going to do a particular segment on the winged coaster elements. Um, other than that... Uh, once that is done, hopefully, this park should be available for download. Uh, yes, even though it is just a park with uh, nothing but B&M coasters in it, I'm still going to make it available for download. So you guys can go ahead and check it out or ride it or whatever. Um, but yeah, other than that, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. So, did everybody do good on the drinking game? Hmm? Anytime I said particular? Yes, well... Well, of course, if you are a little, little too young to drink, you could always try this with maybe soda. Just, you know, so you can get in on the fun. Uh, I, for one, particular, particularly, say, I keep doing it. Say, I just get into habit now. Every time I keep trying to say it, now it just keeps coming out automatically. What have I done? Or oh, whatever. Anyway, um, particularly, again, there we go. I like a shot of Soko myself. But, uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. If you guys do want to subscribe, there's a subscribe button right up there. If you guys want to watch any more videos, more on the way soon. Um, other than that, here is a nice POV shot of our roller coaster that we just went through with Orca. Um, I know in the video I said something about stealth, about the flying roller coaster, and I was right. It was called stealth. And also, it was the first flying roller coaster to ever be built. That's right. The coma beat B&M to a first thing. Well, you know, B&M had the inverted coaster, but the coma. Let me see again. Just in case again, I need to see this. I don't want to, uh... I don't want to, uh... Yes, it was. The coma. And it was at Paramount's Great America. But I think they moved it to, um... Either they moved it or they renamed it to Nighthawk. And either they renamed the park for Paramount, now called, uh, let me see here. Uh, shoot, I lost my spot. California Great America. Or I think it was just called Paramount's Great America. Now it's called Great America. I don't know. But I know it's no longer with us. It's gone now. The first, God, it was the first, world's first flying roller coaster and they took it down. I mean, you think that would be like a, a, what are they called? I think it's called like the Ace. Uh, there's like an industry where um, they go ahead and mark, they mark each roller coaster like a landmark. Like in Magic Mountain, they named, um, oh shoot, uh, Revolution. Oh my God, I can't believe I forgot that world, uh, that roller coaster. Uh, Revolution as the first successful looping coaster. Um, you know, I will be delving into more of the history about roller coasters, so I'm only giving you a small tidbit about what goes on. But yeah, uh, Revolution was named by Aces as a landmark coaster because it was the first successful 
There were loops before, not quite successful as Revolution. A first successful looping roller coaster. And you'd think that Stealth would be named, you know, would be a landmark as the first flying coaster. But you know what, unfortunately, it's gone now. I think it was in June of 1999. Yeah, wait, no. Yeah, three years. Yeah, 2003 was when it closed. Yeah, what's their deal? I wanted to go on that ride, and it was here in California. It's up north. They could drive there, maybe. Uh, but whatever. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and enjoy, if it's not already over yet, the Flying Roller Coaster Orca.